All right, welcome back. So today we're gonna to be revisiting our boosters. We're gonna be adding a neat little effect with our boosters where if we turn it on, our background kind of grays out and we can no longer move stuff because we're, you know, should be placing a booster. But then when we turn it back off, then we can move stuff again. So let's uh, get started. Hey everybody, welcome back. So today we're going to be taking a look at how our project overall looks right now. And we're specifically going to be revisiting the booster setup. So let's dive right into that. The first thing I want to do is take a look at how our game would look from the very, very beginning. So I'm going to go to the game menu scene. Let's open that up and let's play from here. So I've got the sound playing here. I'm going to turn that off because that seems to be an issue whenever I'm recording a video. It's always way louder than I think it is. So from here, uh, if we hit play, we're brought to our level select. Quit brings us back here, and we can start one of our levels. Now, really, really quickly here, there's a few things that we need to make sure that we have set up. So I'm just going to very quickly win this level, and then I'll show you what I mean. Do, do, do. Okay, so first we never implemented the score label here. We're going to do that. And then when we go back here, we've got level 2. And if I can win level two really fast, oh, just under the wire, uh, I'll go back and you'll see that level three didn't open up. So let's talk a little bit about why this is. So since we're making changes to the game window scene and the game manager, the default version of the game manager has the level set to one. You need to go back through to all of your levels and make sure they know which level they are. So for example, level two here in the game manager needs to know it's level two. And my level three in the game manager needs to know it's level three. I'm sure some of you already did this. Level four in the game manager needs to know it's level four and level five and so on. So whenever we're making changes to the base scene of our game window, and we need to make sure that we're changing things across all inherited versions of that scene. So I'm just gonna save those and then we'll close these up. All right, so that's the first thing. Now, the second thing that we wanna do is get that high score label working the way that we want it to. So that's actually really simple. We've already set it up almost entirely. We just have to make a few small changes and a really small adjustment to our signal. To do that, we're gonna to go to our game win screen and let's open that in its own scene. Now we already added the label here. I'm gonna rename it so that it makes sense and I'm just gonna call it score label and I'm gonna default its text to four zeros. And this way I can see how the text is aligned and what it looks like. It's very much not what we want our text to look like. So I'm gonna change the alignment to center in both directions a little bit better. Then I'm gonna to go to the uh, custom fonts variable down here. We're going to create a new dynamic font and let's go to the font. Let's load it from the fonts folder. And let's load this one because I don't think I've used this one yet. Uh, when I was testing, I think 64 was a good size. And I'm going to turn on the outline color for this as well. I'm going to try to use the same outline color that I use for the writing here. Um, and then we'll turn the outline size to like three. And that's not too bad. All right, now. I'm going to go into my game win screen, which already has a script attached to it. I'm already receiving a signal from the game manager for when the game is won to say if is out is false, then is out is true and slide in. So what we want to do here really quickly is let's make an on ready reference to that text label. So on ready var score label is equal to dollar sign. And this is part of the reason why we labeled it so that we can easily find it when we go through that. Now in here, I'm gonna pass in another argument. Uh, and that argument is gonna be the score to display. And then before I have this come in, I'm gonna say score label.text is equal to, and I need to cast this as a string. Otherwise it doesn't it can't make a text, which is supposed to be a, a string value. It can't make it an integer value because those are two differently sized containers. But if we cast it as a string, then it will display it as a string. All right, so let's save this. Now, 
we're going to have an issue if we just play right now. And that's because our game menu, when it emits that game one uh, signal, it doesn't pass an argument with it. So we need to make sure that we're doing that. So if we go back to the, not game menu, sorry, game manager. If we go back to the game manager, where we pass the game one signal, we're also going to add as an argument current score. All right. Now I kind of went back and forth as to whether or not this should be the current score or the current high score. I just went with current score because I think that fits, but it's up to you whether or not you want to check to see if this is the current score or the current high score, or you could have two labels on your game win screen. You could have one label for high and then score and then your score and then score. And then that way they could see if they got the high score by just seeing whether or not they match. Um, but I'm just going to go over kind of the basics here. If you know how to do this, it shouldn't be too much more to make a high blank score and then current blank score. And then you just pass two variables. All right. So I'm going to save all my scenes here really quickly. And let's go back to our window and let's hit play. And let's make sure that that label is displaying the way we want it to. Uh oh, I'm going to lose. So it's not going to display. Maybe. No, I lost. All right, let's, uh, let's up that timer value here from five, since we're not testing that right now. Let's make it, I don't know, 50. That should be enough for me to get six blues. Or maybe not, <laughs> depending on the board I'm given. Uh, I might have to fast forward through this. Okay, there we go. So we've got our score label, and that appears here when our EU win screen comes in. So we're good there. Now, let's start addressing these boosters. So, I kind of went back through and th thought about the way I'd like the boosters to show themselves. And the main idea that I have is that I'd like it when you press the, the booster button for something to happen on screen so that you know that you're in a state where you're trying to place a booster. So what I thought would look good is maybe if you had a screen that went over the background that made it kind of fade out a little bit and then you could have that screen fade back uh, make it look like the background is fading back in when you're not using the booster or after you've used the booster so what i did is i went into my image editing software i use affinity designer but you can use several free alternatives for this i made just a rectangle that's the size of the screen 576 by 1024 i used the color palette i've been using for all of this which is soft milk um, which i found on low spec and I just brought the transparency down to about 50% on that rectangle. And I saved and exported this. And then uh, back in Godot here, I'm going to make that part of my art here so that I can use it. So in my art folder, let's open this up, desktop. I'm just going to pull my screen into there. And let's check the art to make sure it's where it should be, right there at the bottom. Now, to implement this, I went to my canvas layer, my background, and I duplicated by hitting Control or Command D. And I'm going to rename this to Screen, and then change the texture to be that screen. So this is what it's going to look like when we're using our booster, and then it'll go away when we're not. Now we could just have it pop into existence, but I thought it'd be cool if it kind of faded in. So how we can do that? is we're going to right click on our screen and we're going to save this branch as its own scene. And I'm going to go into the scenes and save it there. Now if I open that up in its own thing, I'm going to add a child node and I'm going to use a tween node to do this. I could also use an animation player, but I like how the tween works better. Um, with animation players, you have to play with the curves to get something that looks kind of the way you want it to. I'm also going to rename this to fade tween. Now on my screen here, I'm going to add a new script and I'm just going to leave it called screen, but I'm going to make sure I'm putting it in the scripts folder and we'll create that. First, I'm going to make an on ready vary our reference to that fade tween. So on ready var fade tween is equal to fade tween. And then I'm going to make two functions here. Uh, one function is for fading in one function is for fading out. So the first function, I'm just going to call fade in. And this is going to 
uh, change some settings on that fade tween. So we're going to do fade tween. To tween, if you remember from the movement, we're going to use the interpolate property. And there's a bunch of different arguments we have to pass into this. Let's go distraction free so we can see it. First, we need to tell it the argument or the object, and that's going to be the self. Then the property in quotation marks. In Godot, the color property is modulate. The initial value, if we're fading in, then we want our initial value to be color 1, 1, 1, meaning fully white, and then 0 for the alpha value, meaning fully transparent. The value that we want to go to, I'm going to put this on another line. We're going to go to color 1, 1, 1, 1, so fully opaque. The amount of time we want it to take, I'll say 0 0.3 seconds. The kind of tween we want to use, and you can play with this. I'm just going to use cubic because it's a nice kind of easing function. And then the kind of tween, which I'm going to do ease out. And then we need to start that tween. So fade tween dot start. Now the fade out function is almost exactly the same. So I'm going to copy this, save myself a little bit of typing, paste it there. I'm going to rename this to fade out. And this is going to go from fully trans or fully opaque to fully transparent. But everything else is the same. Now the last thing I'm going to do in here at the moment is go to my ready function. And in my ready function, I'm going to set the modulate equal to color 1110. So I want this to be fully transparent to begin with. So if I go out of here and look at my game window, save my scene. Even if I look at my game window, you see how it's blurred in. If I hit play, it's going to be clear because we're automatically setting that modulate in the ready function. Now we need to communicate between the game manager and that screen whether or not it should be faded in or faded out. Now we already have a signal to do that. In our bottom UI, if we go to node, we already have a booster signal, but right now it's going to the grid. So let's disconnect that from the grid and let's reconnect it to our game manager so that our game manager is handling whether or not things should fade in. So we're going to make a new signal in our game manager here to say whether or not the booster is active, but uh, I'm going to Sorry about that weird cut. So we're going to make a signal that I'm going to call boost or background fade in, maybe screen fade in. So signal screen fade in, and another one for screen fade out. So signal screen fade out. All right, so now what I want to do is when that booster button is pressed, I want to know whether or not the boosters are active. And if they're active, I want it to fade out. And if they weren't active, I want it to fade in, which means I'm going to need another Boolean value here to check whether or not boosters are currently active. So I'm going to make a new little section here that I'm going to call booster stuff var booster active and default it to false. So then when we get the booster signal from the button, we're going to say if boosters are already active, and then we're going to emit signal, screen fade out, meaning that we're going from active to inactive, and we're going to say booster active equals false. Now if the boosters aren't active, we're going to emit a signal, screen fade in, and set booster active equal to true. Now we need to hook these signals up to that screen. So if we go out of here, we're going to go to our game manager, to find those two new signals we made. Screen fade in, we're going to connect this to the screen. And screen fade out, we're going to connect to the screen. So to the screen. Uh, screen fade in, we're just going to call fade in and screen fade out, we're going to call fade out. Now, because 
this isn't happening instantaneously, what I'm going to do is before I call fade in, I'm going to tell the tween node to stop. So fade tween dot stop. And I'm going to do the same thing for the fade out. All right, let's save that. Now, if we go back to our game window here, if we hit play, do, do, do. Okay, so what did I forget to do? Okay, that's what I forgot. So if I go to my errors here, my debugger, and then choose errors, I have error calling method from signal booster. And the reason why is my boosters are passing an argument with them, and I haven't set it up to take that argument in the game manager yet. So I'm going to just delete that from the very first one, but leave it in the second and third so that I remember how I had it set it up before. But I'm just only going to use the very first booster button. So if I delete that, and now I play my game, let's see if it'll work. Okay. So it's not stop, it must be stop all. I thought since it was just start, it would be stop. But let's stop and stop all. So here we go. That's what happens when I veer away from my notes, even for a single line. So there we go. So we got this nice little fade in, fade out effect. Cool. Now, the problem with that, though, is we haven't done anything to restrict the movement. So what we want to do is in the game manager here, in the game manager script, we want to send a signal to the grid to tell it to not be able to move when the booster is active. But we also only want to be able to press that booster button if everything is nice and settled. So we're going to say if booster active and board stable, then we're going to fade out. Uh, we're going to say else if not booster active and board stable. So if the board isn't stable, we're not going to do anything if you press that booster button. You're only allowed to use the boosters if the board is stable. And this is to make sure that the next thing that we're going to do is going to be received correctly by the grid. So what we want to do is we want to emit a signal to the grid to change its movement. So we'll call this signal uh, grid change move. How about you guys can probably come up with a better name than I did for that. We're going to emit that signal as well. So emit signal, grid change move, and then down here as well. Emit signal, grid change move. Then we're going to connect that signal to our grid, and then in the grid we'll just tell it to set can move equal to the opposite of what it currently is. So we're going to connect this to the grid, and in here, let's go all the way down to where new signals go and say can move is equal to the opposite of can move. Meaning if it's true, it becomes false, and if it's false, it becomes true. Now, this seems a bit wonky to me, but it's the best logic I could come up with. In the comments, if you guys can come up with better logic to do this, feel free to let me know. I am far from an expert and always, always, always willing to take feedback. So I'm going to save all my scenes here. And let's go back in and let's do two tests. First, let's turn the boosters active and make sure that we can't move it. Boosters inactive, we can move it. All right, that's good. Now, while everything's falling, I'm going to try and press the booster button and it doesn't work. So there we go. We started to reconfigure our boosters with this new refactor. Uh, all right, we're going to continue from here by actually getting those boosters to work. We already have the logic for the boosters, so the next couple of videos should go pretty fast. But um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. You can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. You can join my Discord where there's tons of really cool people every day chatting along and working out problems and figuring out how to do this stuff. So if you want to join them, that'd be awesome. Everybody would love to have some more people in there. Uh, I have a Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. You can help me make videos like this. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like. YouTube will show you more like it. You can also subscribe. And I've been told that even disliking me 
is good. So I don't know, just go nuts on those buttons down there. Just click them all if you want to. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, I hope everybody has themselves a wonderful day.